Okay, so hacking OpenStack for Padawans. And for those of you that are not aware, this is the official Star Wars uh, themed OpenStack Summit, right? So I've gone to at least four or five talks where you know, some Star Wars is mentioned. So this is my little contribution. That's all. There are no pictures of Wookiees and whatnot. Um, yeah. <laughs> Copyright infringements. And this is already a little bit right. So um, the talk is already up at uh, GitHub uh, pages. So I highly recommend you actually open up a browser window right now on that uh, address there. Um, I know the whole thing, like it's, it's a QR code, so you're using your phone, and then how do you send the phone URL to the computer? So uh, do your best. Uh, the actual URL is, let me read it out loud, arbrandis.github.io, hacking OpenStack for Padawans, no spaces, all um, small letters. The reason is I, I just threw in some links in there. So you might want to, it's going to be easier for you to just click the links instead of typing it out every time I open a web page here. Uh, the reason, of course, is uh, OpenStack is, contributing to OpenStack is a very much, uh, it's part uh, Sherlock Holmes, part um, talking a lot to people. And only a fraction of that is actually writing code. So um, yeah, you, we're going to go all over with this. OK, so let me see how this thumb drive is doing. Yeah, it's going to take a while. All right, so um, can I, may I? Is, did everyone get that? I hope so. Is that working, by the way? Yes. Okay, good. It's, a, it's the exact same thing you're going to see here, um, with the exception of the shell in a box thingy. So uh, without further ado, further ado, what are you going to get from this uh, little workshop? Um, one of the first things we're going to do is see how to set up a comfortable environment for you to start uh, digging into OpenStack code. Now. Comfortable is a relative term, um, uh, and this in the sense that what I mean by comfortable here is if you have a, a, a five-year beard and you know how to do VI, then you're going to be very, very comfortable, um, especially if you're used to 80-character wide terminals, okay? Um, <laughs> but um, if you aren't, if you have no Linux experience at all in editing files in Linux and uh, in the command line especially, which is what we're going to do, um, bear with me. You know, this is OpenStack, and it is something that you're going to want to at least uh, learn a little bit about. So um, if you have questions about specifics such as, you know, which is better, Emacs or Vim or whatnot, you know, uh, I'm not going to answer that, by the way. But uh, <laughs> feel free to come around and ask. What's the login for the virtual Oh, yeah, sorry about that. It's DevStack, uh, DevStack. And the user is DevStack. The directory where DevStack dev is is DevStack. So, um, something else we're going to do is, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of time. This is just an hour and a half. This is actually part of our. Uh, 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 much of this is part of a course uh, I actually teach, and contributing and learning how to hack and learning your way around a project is are things that take weeks to months. Uh, what we're going to do here is just a quick overview of uh, where to start looking. Okay, so um, take how to hack OpenStack with a grain of salt today. You're not going to come out of this uh, workshop uh, experts in... Uh, <laughs> stay there. <laughs> okay, but you will know where to start looking and you will know how to start fooling around with uh, changing OpenStack and to do your bidding, which is really cool if you like programming, right? Um, and most importantly, of course, once we do have something to contribute, it's not going to be something great. It's going to be something average to medium. 
And um, we will, however, uh, send it up, and it's going to be rejected. Uh, probably not in five, the five, ten minutes we're going to have, but you're going to uh, be able to follow along and see people reviewing it later, maybe. Um, you're going to see some people getting pissed off. Uh, I'll tell you why in a moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, and this is, by the end of this, uh, hopefully, you're going to have seen the whole process of contributing a patch to fix a bug. All right? I will mention blueprints, but we'll, of course, not have time to get into a lot of those because that's a whole other thing in, in the sense that um, contributing a blueprint is a work in and of itself. Um, and then the code comes later. We'll, we'll get to that. Okay, so a little about me. My name is Adolfo Brandes. I'm a developer uh, by career choice, um, stacker because it's really cool, and currently I do a lot of training with the Hastexo folks. Um, I'm a geek and kind of weird in that I like to run barefoot, um, even though everybody says it's going to ruin my legs and my back and everything, but yeah, I like it. And I'm, of course, a senior consultant at Hastexo. If you care to, you can follow me on Twitter at, uh, AR, at AR Brandis. All right, uh, how are we doing now? Raise of hands, people that already have the VM. Yeah, it's going slow. OK. Sure. Yeah, this, this particular, uh oh, no space left on device. Who, whose was this? The black IBM thumb drive. Yeah, sorry about this. Yeah, I'm doing the next one. You got another one there after No, just, yeah, just keep sending them. I'll <laughs> Once again, there's no, uh, there's nothing special in this VM except for the fact that it has DevStack already installed and you're not going to be you're not going to need to download anything off the off the Wi-Fi here. Uh, Ubuntu. This is Ubuntu, 12.04. Okay, so, um, contributing to and hacking OpenStack. Go ahead. You want the URL? No. <laughs> no questions are stupid. Go How do we import it? I'm going to get there. Uh, but maybe I should already show you right before... So people can go ahead. Uh, where am I? OK, to import the VM, you open up VirtualBox. You should have, have VirtualBox installed. I believe I said it in the description uh, of the training, training actually the workshop. So file import appliance. Um, this is going to look a bit different depending on your platform. But here we are. Just select the OVA that, that's in those uh, thumb drives. Click Next. You just leave, leave it alone. Uh, don't reinitialize the MAC address, because otherwise Ubuntu is going to complain when it boots, or it's going to take a long time. So just click Import. And it's going to take some time. The art of predicting how long things are going to take, right? No, nobody gets this right, ever. <laughs> what? Especially when you're up on stage. <laughs> oh, they have an if case for that. Like, if you're on stage, just fuck it all up. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, I'm going to leave, leave that completing so I can then. All right. not what I meant to do. Oh, it's done. OK. So once you're done, you're going to have a nice little dev stack um, entry there. Okay. If you want, you can go ahead and boot it up. 
Once again, the username uh, to log in is devstack, password devstack. I did make a, the default here is to have the VM run on NAT. Okay, I didn't add any networks. Um, I did, however, add a port forward, I think, yeah, there you go. Two, two, I forwarded two ports. So if you want to SSH into the VM once you boot, you SSH into port 12.2.10, 1.2.2.10. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, how to do it from the Linux command line at least. If you're on Windows or Mac, you're going to, you know, Windows you can use PuTTY, a Mac, I'm not a big Mac guy, so I don't know, probably, there are probably alternatives. Um, so you can SSH into the VM by, by connecting to localhost at port 12210, once it boots up. And the reason you're going to want to do that is that using the VirtualBox console basically sucks ass. So you're not going to be able to copy and paste correctly and whatnot. So, <laughs> so do SSH into the VM. And you maybe want to start now so you, by the time I get there, you're already in. Um, I'm also forwarding port uh, 80 into the VM. So once you, you, you're going to be able to uh, check out Horizon running on that stack by connecting to localhost colon 12280 once everything is running. Okay. So yeah, how hard can it be? We're barely booting up our VMs and it's already hard. Okay. Um, all right, so we know that hundreds, at least more than a thousand, I think, people do it. Um, they, what I mean is hundreds of people contribute to, um, let me see if the internet works here. So there's this thing called, called OLO, where, once again, thanks to Florian for the, this, uh, you can check a, an, any, or basically a lot of open source projects uh, statuses. So um, we can see that OpenStack has 115,000 commits uh, by over 2,000 contributors ever since it started in uh, December 2006. So, you know, it's doable <laughs> uh, if you stick to it. So. Um, as you probably know, it's mostly written in Python, about, according to this, 70% of it. Um, surprisingly, 13% of OpenStack is written in XML, <laughs> which is, <laughs> right? <laughs> what are you going to do? And a little bit of JavaScript. Okay, so this is OLO. And uh, we also have, where am I? There you go. Something called... Uh, activity.openstack.org. If I can open this, it would be nice. Which is really nice because you get the statistics directly from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Um, it's going to take a little while to load, but it's just something you should be aware of, okay? So once again, code developers around 2,000, uh, 5,000 people open tickets and report them, which is something you're going to want to be doing as well. Um, and about 3,000 people actually discuss things in the mailing list, which is all very important. Okay, so feel free to move around here and explore the, the, the statistics. It's, it gives you a, a broad overview of how OpenStack is evolving. Um, one of the things that I noticed just when preparing this talk is OpenStack is roughly doubling in size as far as committers and, uh, and, and um, involvement is every year. So at a, every roughly 12 months. So now we have what? Uh, we had, I think, 1,500 developers over the last 12 months. And it's looking like the next year is going to bring in 3,000. So uh, yeah, it's, it's really an awesome thing to be part of this. And I hope uh, you guys are one of the, are part of the, of the new group, okay? All right. Uh, 
Nope, that's not what I want. I basically screwed everything up here, sorry. So, how are we doing with the VMs? Let me see. <laughs> Read only file system. That's not going to work, is it? <laughs> I wonder why, though. <laughs> is, there, is there something I can do? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's Linux. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm going to try again. Is it formatted as a Mac volume? No, no, I, ca I can see the, the f oh, there, it op it, there's, there are two partitions. So I, I tried the wrong one. How's your virus set up on your laptop? Viruses on Linux? What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Okay, so we know hundreds of people do it, so you're going to be able to do it. Uh, we know everything is documented, or is it? Uh, actually, <laughs> the documentation is pretty good nowadays. Um, if you go to wiki.openstack.org, this is what this link goes to, by the way. Um, you should see a very a brief, very excellent, in my point of view, uh, ov overview of how to go and step-by-step get down to contributing code, okay? And a lot of what I got for this presentation came from there. So, uh, yeah, it's great. Okay, but everything's documented. Uh, lots of people do it, but still, there are a lot of hoops you have to jump through. And uh, with a project of this size, it's, uh, it's expected and it works very well, but it's still uh, somewhat bureaucratic. Okay, so expect to have to jump through a lot of these and expect a, some level of frustration depending on, on what you're doing, all right? Uh, it's not all just, you know, it, there's the mechanical stuff of going and uh, signing the CLA and creating accounts on Launchpad and um, installing Garrett, learning Git and stuff like that. But uh, there's still the human side of uh, convincing somebody or somebody's that your code is good and that it, uh, it needs to be upstream. And, you know, I've seen, I've seen one-line patches take 20 iterations and a month to get in. So, yeah, uh, it happens. And so you, you basically have to uh, stick to it. Okay, so let's say you're starting from scratch, as I believe some of you are today. Um, maybe your developers, maybe your sysadmins, DevOps, uh, let's, uh, let's say you know Python, or you know how to write documentation, um, and you want to contribute somehow. The first step, of course, is choosing what. And it's not as easy as you'd think. Um, there, as you've seen, there are over 2,000 contributors, at least 1,500 of those active. And uh, it takes m more than one active contributor. It takes actually a core team member to review a patch and accept it uh, and to get it in OpenStack. So there are a limited number of those. And uh, you need to choose, choose things to contribute that make sense to the project. Because if you choose something that only makes sense to you, chances are it's not, simply not going to be accepted at all. Now, I'm not talking about bug fixes here. Uh, if you hit a bug in OpenStack, as I'm sure uh, you've already done, how many, how many of you have hit a bug in OpenStack that uh, you didn't know about before? Let's see. Yeah, so um, did you actually go and try and find a, a report in Launchpad? Yeah? 
Okay, many less hands. <laughs> so um, the idea is when something like that happens, go ahead and make it a practice of trying to find the actual bug on Launchpad. And if it isn't there, report it. Okay, this is a skill uh, that you have to practice in order to um, become a, a proper contributor. Okay, so choose what to contribute. I, the link there goes to a list of um, low-hanging fruits, so-called, which are bugs on OpenStack that are considered by at least one or maybe two people to be bugs that are easy to fix. Now, if you go there, you're probably going to disagree with that uh, assertion. <laughs> okay? They're probably very easy to fix for folks that have been doing this for a while. And there are some bugs there that if you know a little bit of Python and um, you know how to read and write good English, right? Um, you're going to be able to fix with a little bit of effort. But those go like that. Um, now, we're going to get to a bug I chose for us today. And I had to cheat a little bit because it was already taken. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is where I piss off somebody in the OpenStack community for the sake of uh, this talk, but <laughs> we'll get there. Um, so yeah, first thing, choose what to contribute. Maybe you have a bug that you want to fix. You open the bug, you fix it, you submit the code, do it again 10 times, and then it's up there. OK? <laughs> um, all right, so those are links to actually where you can open a bug and, or you can open a blueprint. More on blueprints uh, to the end of the presentation. Now, the actual code, where the hell does it live? Currently, there's the official uh, OpenStack Git repositories, all right? But uh, you might as well just go on hit GitHub, which is a, an up-to-date mirror, and which is what I usually do. Now, if you want to... Um, you can do this on any machine that has Git installed. Um, by the way, Git. How many of you know Git? Excellent. <laughs> so I don't have to convince anybody, right? Git came out of the head of Linus Torvalds, so it's awesome and crazy at the same time. Um, you will need it a lot to work with OpenStack, so make sure you know Git. There's no way around it. Um, Git and Python. Basically, if you want to contribute to OpenStack, you should be uh, honing your skills there. Um, cloning from GitHub directly is not the only way to do it. Uh, we can use DevStack, which is the whole point here of this distribution of uh, appliances, which basically fetches all the code for you of the latest master, um, installs it in uh, slash opt slash stack, and fires up an OpenStack cloud based on that. All fully automated, which is awesome. Um, and the good thing is that the code is, what? Oh yeah, just, yeah, pass it around. Okay, maybe I, this one's done as well. Yay. There you go. All right. Are the files on these are okay? I didn't put up an MD5 sum or anything. Did, have, have, have you been able to boot it? Can I ask a question about DevStack? Yes, you go ahead. So DevStack is pointing to multiple Git repos, and one of the problems is like it stops working because there's some bug in one of the projects. Yes. So is there a way of dealing with it such that you can clone all of them and then just boot it locally in your DevStack? Is there a solution like that? Yeah, I'm going to show you what to do. Um, but of course, uh, master uh, currently, and for the next three months, is going to be broken a lot, right? Because it's the, the implementation cycle. Um, so you know, it depends on what you want to do. For instance, if you want to, let's say you want to backport to fix, then that's easy, right? You, just, uh, you can configure DevStack to pull from uh, Icehouse. And hopefully, that's not that broken all the time. <laughs> so, uh, but you can also configure the dev stack to, to pull, and this is what we're going to do. You git clone like this into, say, your home directory in the dev stack VM, and you tell dev stack to use that as a repo. You see, so it fetches from there. So you edit the code in there, and then you 
git pull from, from inside the dev stack directory. So you have more control of, over, you know, maybe you're testing something on Neutron and then suddenly, you know, Keystone breaks. <laughs> and that's, that's no fun, right? Okay. So you have some control. Okay, so this is how you get the code. I do encourage you to go onto the DevStack site, which this is linking to, and read up a little bit on what you can do with it. Um, once you have the code, you can finally hack on it. And that, as I said, is gonna take you anything from a few hours to a few weeks of work, depending on what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, we're going to come back to this. This is just an overview. I'm, I'm stalling so more people get to get the tab stack. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, you know, we've been discussing in, at, at, uh, I've been talking to Florian these past few days of a way to, uh, if anybody has a suggestion, by the way, aside from bringing in 100 notebooks to, uh, oh, BitTorrent. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Uh, I'd have to talk to the IT guys here to see if the network can handle it, but yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, no, no, that's actually a very good idea. There's BT Sync now too, right? So, yeah, that's closed source, I know, but, you know. You can give it a bunch of USB sticks. Yeah, or I can buy 100 USB sticks. And, and <laughs> yeah, this, I actually went to the office center now and bought five. But, uh, okay. And it took me like an hour to get him on, on the five things. I, uh, forget it. There's, who wants, are we all done? Nobody else is gonna. There's another one. All right, so once you have the code, uh, you spent uh, two weeks on it and it's perfect and it do, does exactly what you want and you want to send it up for review. The first thing you need to do is actually join the, the OpenStack Foundation. Okay, so you join the foundation, you sign into Garrett, you um, sign the contributor's license agreement, agreement, which is essentially giving the foundation the rights to distribute and use your patch. Um, it becomes basically theirs, so to speak, but you do get credit for it, okay? So nothing's ever forgotten. All the patches are on Git and you're gonna get credit. And this is something important because part of being a member of a community is bu building a little street cred, right? So um, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it's easier to get a patch in if people know who you are than the opposite. You know, it, oh, but isn't this a meritocracy? It's all the, it's the technical aspect that matters. But at the end, you need to trust somebody to say that that patch is good, right? And this is the project technical lead, right? So you, you gotta trust somebody. And this guy, um, while his code does need to get uh, reviews as well, people are probably gonna review it like, okay, this is the PTL. I don't need to you know, bother too much. However, <laughs> Uh, it does happen that um, even PTLs get patches rejected and they have to iterate and everything, right? This, this is a community after all, it's not a dictatorship. So um, we're gonna go through signing the CLA as well. And we're also gonna go through Garrett, which is, which is awesome by the way. And it's what makes it possible for all this to work because um, it's a tough problem to solve. How do you get you know, a random number of people to review a patch, then say it's good, and then accept it, and then test it, and then push it upstream? You need something to glue all that together and automate it, and this is what Garrett does. We're also gonna uh, go through how that works in a little while. And also, as I said, uh, that's not all. Once you send a patch upstream to, to Garrett for review, you s you're still gonna need to talk to people and uh, convince them that the patch is good, and you either do it on Garrett itself or on IRC or on the mailing lists. It all depends on what you're contributing. Usually, usually if it's a little bug, you know, uh, not a lot of discussion is required outside Launchpad maybe. Uh, 
which usually is strictly regarding the technical merits of the bug. But sometimes, if you're contributing a blueprint, for instance, you're going to have lengthy uh, tens of emails, uh, threads on, on mailing lists trying to get buy-in for your blueprint. Okay? So this is something to keep in mind as well. There's a lot of communication. You can't be re too shy. Um, and well, once again, this is one of the reasons we're all here, right? Uh, this is now the design summit. So um, this is where the folks come to meet the other developers face to face and get buy-in like that, or to fight or whatever. You know, design summit sessions, you never know. Um, there's also the question of timing, which you have to uh, keep in mind. If you submit a blueprint during the pre-release phase, uh, you're not going to get much eyes on it because folks are worried about getting the previous release or the current release ready for production, and that means fixing bugs. So if you're going to submit a blueprint, make sure you do it on the proper place in the OpenStack release cycle, okay, which is, as you probably know, a six-month release, release cycle where in the, uh, it starts with a planning phase, which we are now, where blueprints are sub submitted, discussed, and targeted for next release. Then we go through a, an implementation phase where you actually hack on it, and that's where uh, master breaks all the time. Okay? And finally, uh, the pre-release phase again, and so on and so forth. Okay? And you're going to have to do a lot of these steps many, uh, many, many times. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's not a one-shot deal. All right, so... Okay, let's, let's get down to setting it all up. I already... Um, I'm distributing the DevStack OVA to you guys. Hopefully, by the end of the tutorial, everybody has it. Um, you're going to import it on VirtualBox by File Import Appliance, as, we, as I've just shown you. And then we'll boot it up. So there's a thumb drive free here. Anybody? Where's my mouse? There you go. Okay, so there it is. Let's see, boot, see it boot up. By the way, this OVA, if you're running something other than VirtualBox, I guess you can also import it if it supports it, so. I did it in um, VMware Fusion, and it failed on the first time, but it, um, if you clicked retry, you would try with more Lex. Um, oh, really? Yeah, and, <laughs> and then it works. And then it works fine. Okay, so yeah, turn it off and on, and it works. <laughs> that, that's all we do as IT folks, right? You turn things off and on, and that's it. You know, if, if you're a developer, you turn bits on and off, essentially, right? So <laughs> that was a bad one. <laughs> All right, so uh, I just booted the VM up. Um, where's my awesome? Oh, awesome. Anybody else? There you go. That doesn't look too pretty. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there I am. Um, so what I'm going to do, the VM has booted up, I'm going to SSH at um, port 12210 dev stack at localhost. And um, I'm going to add a dash A here, because later on, if you have SSH keys and accounts on Launchpad, uh, awesome, you're set. I will go through a little bit of what we need to do to get this working. This dash A here essentially tells uh, SSH to forward my uh, authentication agent 
to, should I copy it over here? Or whose is this? What? OK, does anybody, yeah, yeah, that's yours? Yeah, I remember this one. Uh, the one with multiple partitions. Who, who wants, no, nobody? All right. So the dash A is going to forward my authentication agent to um, the DevStack VM, and you're going to see why in a minute. So password is DevStack. Yeah, I couldn't connect to it, so it failed. Yeah, we'll see. Um, so we're in. Okay, so I, I hope you're all, you've all been able to connect to it. Sorry? Okay, so we booted up, we connected to it. Now we're going to take a look at DevStack and what it does. So DevStack, which I've cloned in, sorry. In DevStack, so CD DevStack. Okay, so DevStack is a set of scripts that um, can be configured to your liking to a certain extent through the local dot com file. So if you check that, uh, check that out. By the way, um, if you don't want to mess with Vim or VI or whatever, which is a little bit <laughs> counterintuitive to beginners, um, you may want to use Nano, which is a little less, uh, a little more like, I don't know, Notepad, I guess, except it's completely different. But it's less. <laughs> 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 but it is. <laughs> It is, you know, you don't have to, you know, press I to start uh, typing and changing things and then escape and, you know, all the crazy shit that us guys with beards love. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to go the beard route. Uh, Local.conf. All right, so this is, this is the, basically the template. And you can set things... Uh, you can basically configure your OpenStack installation here, such as, for instance, setting the admin password. Um, go ahead. The port is 12210. Okay, 12210, 12,210. Don't ask why. Uh, you set the MySQL password, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so this is. Just an example. They're all not, this is not a full template. If you want a full template, you might want to look at stack RC, which is in the same directory. Okay? S except you're not supposed to edit that one. You edit local.com. Okay, so this is a pretty extensive list of uh, the available variables you have to uh, configure things. One of them is, as we were discussing earlier here in front, um, is you can define what repository and what branch in that repository DevStack is going to get the code from. Okay, so this is uh, something you're going to do a lot. You're going to want to have your own repository, maybe your own GitHub fork of Nova, and you're probably going to want to pull from that depending on what you're doing. Okay, so back to local.conf. Uh, let's go to the very end there. And um, let me just point out that uh, for this class, I, just, I enabled offline equals true. So I already downloaded DevStack into this box, which is the whole point. So we're not going to use the, the Wi-Fi to, to ins actually install it. And this is the first, first hint that the bug we're going to fix is in Horizon. Um, reason being that um, it's pretty easy to um, see stuff happening, like get, get a, a feedback loop going with, a, a, with fixing a bug or, or changing horizon, you can easily see what you're doing, right? It's not always true with, uh, actually it's <laughs> never true with other, another class of OpenStack bug, which is, uh, you, know, you know that OpenStack, by now I hope, is uh, a project that has many, many components and they all, they're all asynchronous. And debugging this is a pain, 
right? So I picked a bug in Horizon, which is easy to you know, see what's happening without having to wait hours, days to be able to reproduce the, the damn bug. Okay? Yeah, go ahead. What it does is, if you have already run stack.sh, it won't connect to the internet at all to install packages. You see, what DevStack does is, it also installs packages for, for the, from the Ubuntu repositories, from wherever it needs to. So if you enable offline equals true, that means you, you sort of have a stable-ish system to work on, you see? And it doesn't use uh, the internet. OK, and you, you're going to want to install test-only packages equals true because part of the whole process of contribution is to test things a lot before it fails in public, right? So <laughs> you want to you wanna test your stuff locally before you submit it and then it's rejected because it fails, right? It's just, a, just to save on resources and to save some face as well. Okay, so that's local.conf. Um, and Without further ado, this DevStack directory was basically just a Git clone out of the DevStack repository. So it, this, this was done late last night, so it's probably really recent. Um, so what you do now is run stack.sh, like so. So it's dot slash stack.sh when you're inside the DevStack directory. And you need to enter a password here. I'm just going to use DevStack because I have no imagination. And this is going to take a little while. You can uh, follow along a little bit. OK, so as you can see, uh, a lot of the requirements have already been satisfied. So if you were running this the first time, it would, at this point, it would be downloading all the packages out of uh, the Ubuntu repositories, out of pip, out of uh, uh, a whole slew of services. Yeah. I'm sorry? I, it's arbitrary, but pick something. You're going to use it to log in to Horizon, for instance, later. Yeah, yeah, it's just a question. No? I can make it available, sure. Um, I haven't, I haven't, I didn't worry about it too much because right. the, the reason is that uh, you can do this easily uh, at home. It's just install Ubuntu, um, git clone dev stack. That's it. So download Ubuntu server or the minimal Ubuntu CD, whichever, uh, and then git clone dev, actually, apt get install git. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is all. I'm just repeating what's what's in the dev stack. Yeah, they, they have several different use cases, so to speak. So uh, this is the standalone uh, installation, basically. Okay, it, this is what you'd get if you actually installed it on a server. Uh, recommendation is to have a VM with at least two gigabytes currently of RAM. It's and it's already sort of hitting the limit. So maybe you want uh, three or four to, to you know, uh, have a comfortable environment. Once again, comfortable. Questions? You know what I do? I do unstack and then stack again. <laughs> and sometimes I actually remove the directory from OPT stack and, and do weird stuff. Like, you know, uh, that's, that's all it's doing anyway. It's fetching code into op OPT stack and then firing up multiple screens uh, with the services in them. So there's no real mystery there. Like, if you run on stack, it's just going to clean up the databases, et cetera, which is always good, right? Um, so, yeah, that's what I do. We're going to actually do that in a way. No, 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 no. Well, at least it shouldn't, unless there's a newer version. So if offline equals false, and there's a newer, newer MySQL package in Ubuntu, then it'll, okay, it'll, it'll fetch it and upgrade it. 
Um, no, 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 no. That's just, uh, I don't use it that much. But let's take a look at the script. Oh, I don't have a screen running yet. So let, let, me, let, me, have, let me have this finish. Uh, Okay, so it's screen, yeah. What I do is screen dash r. <laughs> so that's what it does, which is why I don't, didn't know what it does, because I just, you know. By the way, screen is awesome. You should all use it uh, always, everywhere. Don't ever have a terminal open without a screen running. Okay, so <laughs> learn screen and control A, K, D, A, whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry? Oh, yeah. I've been meaning to, to play around with it for a while, but I haven't. But I've heard uh, a lot of good things about that one as well. I'm not sure. Does, it, does Biobo work with Tmux? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It makes sense in terms of yeah. the sockets and stuff, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is running really slow here. Uh, has anybody, uh, how are you guys doing there? Finished. Yeah, so it's me, obviously. So all right, if you're done, you can basically start fooling around with it. Um, when it's done, this means that. No, no, it says stack.sh finished in x seconds. That's how you know it, it's done. So what you do then, you can uh, go on, go in the browser and connect to. localhost.12280 and if everything went okay you should be able to see the horizon dashboard up how are we doing on time okay i have 10 minutes to finish the setup actually i should be done with the setup but What do you know? Stack.sh is not even finished, and my horizon's already up. So that's good news, right? Well, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I mean, I, ha I don't have the screens up or anything. You know? I don't know what's uh, magic. It's still running. Maybe the the maybe it's just the delay in the in the terminal updating, whatever. Shell, shell in a box is complaining. I don't know. That does look like it's the, it's the case. Yeah, three minutes. It's usually uh, th around that, three minutes. Yeah, I think, I think this is, I hit some form of uh, buffer. That's <laughs> Just a second, folks. Let me try and. Yeah, it's actually already working. So. Screw that. OK. 
OK, so once it finishes, run screen space dash r, small r. And you should see something like that. Um, and we're currently, I think, at the last screen, but before. Then run uh, control A, and then quotation marks. OK, so control A, release it and shift uh, whatever it is in your keyboard to get the quotation marks. So you get a list of all the windows in a way you can actually read. OK, so um, what you can see here is that DevStack created 21 separate screens, one for each of the OpenStack services it manages. OK, so let's say you want to see how Nova Compute is doing. You go to screen 6, press Enter, and that's uh, what the output looks like. Now, this is actually running in the foreground. So the way to, in DevStack, you, you restart a given service is you go to its screen, you press Control C. So now Nova Compute is dead. And you then press up arrow, and you get the command line to start it back up again. OK? So there you go. Nova Compute is started back up. OK? So once again, Control A. Quotation marks, window list. Uh, now I want heat API. You can sort of guess which one is which, right? Is there a map somewhere that tells every what things are what? Um, <laughs> I mean, some of them are obvious, but some of them maybe aren't. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think there's a map, but let's find one that I don't know what it is. Uh, C is Cinder, so C is Cinder API, Cinder Scheduler, Cinder Volume. Uh, I, I guess what, what's happening here, once you get a feel for the different sub-processes of OpenStack, it's, it sort of become, becomes pretty obvious which, one, which ones they are. So N is Nova, right? So Nova API, CPU, Nova, what, what's Cond again? Conductor, yeah. Uh, Nova Certificate, right? Uh, Nova Network, surprisingly. Uh, Nova Scheduler, Nova NovaNovNC, Nova XVNC, Nova Auth, Nova Object Store, blah, 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 blah. Where's Neutron? Yeah, there, there is no Neutron. It's, new, it's using Nova Network, apparently. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> <laughs> it was probably easier to configure DevStack for, right? <laughs> and this is Glance, Horizon, and Keystone. And you get a nice little shell to do whatever you want. Um, all right. I'm sorry? How do I quit screen? Because all the time I've had an issue with DevStack has few alarm steps. But I want to quit on the screen. Only. You want to, wait, wait. I want to leave the screen session. Oh, you want to leave the screen session? Okay, oh, yeah. Screen, oh, okay. A little screen uh, <laughs> uh, lesson here. So, one of the things you do often in screen, before I get to that, is Control A, Control A. You just switch between the previous screen and the one you are now. Um, you can also do um, Control A D to detach. So that's to answer your question. Control A D, you, you go back to where you were before. And screen dash R, actually I pr much prefer dash D R, D capital R, which means if there's somebody connected to the screen elsewhere, you'll basically kick them out and get the screen for yourself. And by, by someone else, I mean you, because this is per user. <laughs> uh, if you for forgot your screen logged in somewhere. So I just always use D, capital R, and your back end. So Control A, um, quotation marks, same thing again. All right, so let's stick to Horizon for now. Um, I'm a little bit worried about time, so let me 
saddle down here and do some actual work. Um, Okay, so let's get down to a little bit of hacking. Um, let's choose an easy bug. Hopefully, you have this uh, open in your browsers there. And I'm going to open that in. So this is bug number 132.256 on Horizon, as I alluded to before. Let's see what it says here. Um, what this guy is complaining about, and this is, uh, what's, his, what's his name? Cindy Lou. He or she is complaining that um, when you go to project image, create image, the format should not show blank. It should say something like select format. And there is a screenshot here, I believe, to explain what, what he or she means. And that's it. So when you, on Horizon, you go and click on create an image, um, the format uh, Drop down doesn't have sort of a default option to explaining what you should do there, uh, as opposed to when you launch an instance and you are selecting from the boot source. Okay, so what the bug uh, is is asking for here is something like you get in the second uh, uh, part of the screen here. Okay, so that's what we're gonna try and do. Now, I, as I said before, this bug. Is uh, it has been triaged, and this means somebody in the OpenStack community said, "Okay, this is good. Let's fix this." Um, but the importance is low in that this is not a deal breaker for a lot of people. Okay, so which is it's a perfect bug, bug for us today. It's not perfect because somebody is already working on it. Okay, um, and you wouldn't usually do what I'm about to do. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> which is just, you know, go over their heads and, and just try and fix the bug. I'm not too worried because I'm not actually fixing it um, in, a, in a proper way. It's going to be sort of a one-liner just so we change something and have something to submit, okay? Um, now, what I did was I, I, I did this last night, and I went through a whole lot of bugs trying to find one that was going to be easy for you to type in, et cetera, et cetera. And so this was the best one I found. So I'm sorry, Mr. Andres. Uh, Benavides, I hope you're not here right now. <laughs> he works for Intel, apparently. Now, okay, this is a good opportunity to, to, to demonstrate something. I mentioned earlier that contributing in, in such a community is a bit of a Sherlock Holmes job, a little bit of an investigation job. Why? If you come up uh, to something like this, and you see the bugs assigned, but you'd like the fix, you want it today, and you want to know what the hell is going on. Why is the fix not up there? Um, you, you can go down on the, on the, on the launch pad, launch pad bug, and you can see when there's a fix committed for review, it's going to show in one of the comments. Okay, so this, there's a link to Garrett and everything. So there isn't anything here. But as you can see, this uh, Junichi Matayoshi guy, are you here, by the way? <laughs> He asked for, for, for taking over the bug, what was it, about a week ago. Okay? I want to I do it because this is my first bug in order to contribute to OpenStack. So he was really, really polite. And um, I recommend you follow this guy's lead. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> yeah, don't follow mine. <laughs> and Andres said, also very politely, thank you, uh, Nietzsche, for your help, but I already have the fix. I, I will push it this sick in short time. Uh, but where is it? <laughs> it's been a week, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so, so this is going to happen all the time. 
Uh, you're going to find bugs. You're going to want to fix. But you know, I'm working on it. I have it. Do you know the story of GIMP, by the way? Uh, the story of GIMP was somebody, you know, the guy, I forget his name. So help me out here. He wanted to, to develop GIMP, and he was like, I'm going to do it. And some other guy said, no, don't do it. I already have something working. Um, don't, don't create GIMP. I already have something else that does exactly the same thing. And you know that thing never showed up. So good thing <laughs> the other guy ignored it, which is what we're going to do now. Okay, so we're going to ignore uh, Andres. Sorry, Andres. And we're going to actually fix it and submit it for review. Actually, I'm going to do it. You guys don't press the enter button at the very end. Okay, otherwise. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, then we're just humiliating, humiliating the guy. Okay, so. so <laughs> all right, so we want to fix this bug. Uh, we chose it. Um, the question is now, where the hell do I edit the code? And we're going to come back to. Uh, I'm sorry, what's your name again? Huh? Paul. Ikpal. All right. We're going to come back to your question as to what do I do. Because you know, dev stack is sort of uh, possessive. If you edit the code in place, it's going to do things to it. It's going to go away, it's, uh, et cetera. So you don't want to do that. Um, what you want to do is on your VM, OK, so I'm going to go to, oh yeah, another screen trick. We know that screen 0 is where you get to do whatever you want. So you, you type in control A, 0. So you're back in there, or you can go the other control A uh, quotation mark and choose the shell. And if you just CD back into DevStack's home directory and ls, um, yeah, that's relatively readable. You can see DevStack and Horizon. And what I did was I git cloned Horizon in there. Okay, um, so it's an actual. Horizon clone. And as I've shown you in devstack loco.conf, I told devstack to use home devstack horizon as a repository for its uh, horizon deployment. So if I go on opt stack horizon and I do git remote dash v, I can see that the origin for this git, git checkout is actually my home DevStack Horizon uh, deployment uh, or checkout where I'm actually going to edit the code. OK? So let's go in there, Horizon. And um, now I'm not going to teach you how to code, sorry, or how to read projects, or how to, you know, this is something that takes all of, you know, two weeks in Python. <laughs> you know, people get degrees for this, but, you know, Python's really easy, so. <laughs> you just need a little bit of patience. Um, so let me, you know, just out of curiosity, so I, what did I do? I, I don't, I'm not a big uh, connoisseur of the billions of OpenStack projects and their code, okay? I know a little bit of of a, a couple of them, but I don't know, I didn't know how to fix this. Now, this is, an actual, this is actually a very good example of an excellent bug report, okay? Because it's very clear, there's, there's an, an example and a counter example. So what's the counter example again? Um, it's this guy over here. So I know that if I grab horizon and for select source, I'm probably going to find something that works very similar to what, what the, the bug reporter wants. Okay, so that's one of, the, one of the ways you can go about fixing bugs, okay, if you don't really know what you're doing. You sort of feel your way around. All right, so that's what I did, and I, I found a place, and then I found out it's completely different from the way the, <laughs> the image dialog works, right? Because, you know, OpenStack, it looks standardized, but it isn't. <laughs> especially where the code is concerned. You have all sorts of ages, uh, all sorts of styles, or s all sorts of everything in, in there. So things don't always work the same, uh, even on, on Horizon, for example. 
So what I ended up finding out to save some time, because we're running out of time, is that, um, where am I? Um, we actually just need to edit the settings.py file to fix this bug. Okay, so it's, it's a really, 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 really low hanging fruit. Why? Because, um, once again, let me go back here. Oops. So from the root directory, cd horizon, open stack dashboard, okay? And then edit settings.py in there. And then you're gonna look for the open stack image backend um, variable. It, which simply lists all the OpenStack image backends available. And before I continue, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be right. Let me just first show the, the first step in fixing a bug is finding the bug? No, reproducing the bug. <laughs> you have to actually, yeah, it's part of finding the bug, you're right. So you actually need to see the bug happening before you can fix it, be why? Because when you fix it, you need to be able to tell that it's fixed, <laughs> okay? It's, right? <laughs> so, how are we gonna do that? And this is the reason I chose a bug in Horizon, because it's pretty easy to do. So, username admin. So, have you all been able to get here? Those of you that are following along. So, admin, password, dev stack. This is probably gonna take 500 years on mine, but... Uh, <laughs> The memory is all overcommitted already. Let me check. But how do you know that it's, uh, yeah, see that? <laughs> I'm barely, I have 100 megs free. Uh, Question? How do you know that it's settings not something you can get everything? Yeah, see, that's where you need to hone your investigative skills, your coding skills. This is. Once you get to know the project, you're gonna start, you know, and by project, I don't mean OpenStack, I mean the, like, Horizon or you, as you move along, this is, this is a tip, by the way. If you don't know where to contribute, choose a project, project and learn it. Don't learn all the projects, because they're huge, okay? So what I would recommend then, maybe, I don't know, maybe start with Horizon if you have some web experience, because Horizon is Django, okay? So, um, what happened last night was I did go into all the, is it in the database? Is it in uh, one of the uh, PY files way down in the, in the middle of the project? And I actually found out that one of these files uses the settings to create the dropdown. Okay, so you end up moving in circles and you, you end up, you have to follow the string of, of the, the train of thought of the programmers, I guess. The collective train, train of thought of the programmers. So yeah, use the force. <laughs> so um, where am I? You can keep on asking questions, guys, while I do this. OK, so yay, there we go. Now let's reproduce the bug. Um, images. Yeah, I don't think it matters. Okay, so yeah, here's the bug. We don't have uh, something that tells us what we need to do, and because we can't see that, we don't know what to do, right? <laughs> so let's fix it. Um, so once again, I'm, I, I remember somebody saying that I lost you guys. So once again, I'm on screen zero here, and I'm running cd horizon open stack underscore dashboard, and I'm editing the settings.py file, and I'm moving down to line number, line number 80, which in VI this is super intuitive, you type in 80, Shift G and it takes you there. <gasps> right, so VI is awesome. <laughs> 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 
It's all muscle memory. <laughs> so OpenStack image backend. And the first entry there, and this sucks because this red is horrible. Um, you can barely tell these are two ticks here, two sets of two ticks. And, and what you want to do is in the second one, if you want to do this right, open quote, close quote, you use the translation engine, right? So you surround that uh, second pair of ticks in underscore parentheses, because the, you do exactly what the other entries do. Um, and you insert something like Miss Liu once, right? What's, what's his or her name? Shit, this is going to be bad, too. Let me try and get back into my. Yeah. Yeah, except, except uh, I can't gvim into the dev stack VM that easily, right? So. Thank you. <gasps> Magic. <laughs> we haven't. You know, us bearded guys help each other, so thank you. Do you have a beard? <laughs> yeah, I could have just used VI, or could I? I don't know. Lately, in the late, latest distros, it's just a shortcut for, for an alias for Vim. But. So two sets of dash, 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 and I'm going to say, what was it? Select format, right? Select format. Yeah, that was it. Space. So I'm going to colon write this. Let's check. On the screenshot, it says select source, no caps on the second one. So <laughs> we got to stick to something, people. We have to believe in something. So <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, blueprint. No, we should always capitalize our everythings. OK. <laughs> so all right, select format. Uh, am I losing somebody so far? Is it, is it OK? This is critical to the process. So all right, right. And I'm going to see if Horizon's smart enough to pick up on it without restarting anything. I doubt it. But uh, yeah, F5. F5, create image. No, it's dumb, so we need to restart Apache. OK, I remember that. I did it on purpose. <laughs> so um, once again, I'm going to find the horizon uh, window here. I'm going to control C. And I need to run a sudo service Apache to restart. Okay, So sudo, make me a sandwich. Remember that one. Uh, service Apache 2 restart. Uh, you can use tab completion for those of you that are new to the command line. So sudo service app pa, tab. Okay, <gasps> magic. Restart. The origin is showing what? Oh yeah, so, so now the point here is I edited this in, in right? I did it on purpose. Um, the code is not running live. Okay, the, we edited this on the local, uh, uh, our local directory. So we need a way to push it up, all right? Um, this is where we need to start uh, getting Garrett to work, and which is fine because we're almost done. So. This is important. Um, what we need to do is to git config your uh, data, basically. And by this point, you should already have a, um, you will have a git review username, which you don't, because I don't know if you already, ah, see how hard can it be? <laughs> Um, where am I? OK, you need to do this, all right? Um, so if you haven't, go ahead and create a Launchpad account. You know, you can go ahead and go to that slide. And you're going to need to create the Launchpad account. 
you need to click on the join the foundation link and actually join the foundation. It's not as easy as it sounds. There are plenty of fields, all right? I know, because I try to get my friends to vote for this talk, and they were all like, what? <laughs> I have to join the foundation? Yeah, so no cheating. <laughs> um, and then you finally sign in to review.openstack.org and agree to the CLA. Um, by that point, you should have a username in Garrett, which is review.openstack.org, which you can then use for what I'm going to do right now, which is, where are we? Git config, all of this stuff. Okay, so I think I'm going to be able to cheat here. Yeah. So on screen uh, zero, you can run git conflict global username Adolfo Brandless and git config, uh, what was it, uh, user email. I'm going to use my Hestexo account here. No, no, it won't be. It won't be because I edited the code somewhere else. There's no way. <laughs> I could, you know, if you want to skip a, a step here, uh, you can go ahead and edit it. You know, we're in offline mode. Nothing's going to get overwritten. You can go in uh, OPT uh, stack horizon and do the same thing in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, I'm, I'm, I have to do this because this is part of the thing, right? You're not going to be able to submit the code if you don't do what I'm doing now. Okay, you do need to have the, the, the git configured. You need to have the, the Garrett username specially, okay? And finally, uh, git review dot username. In my case, that's git review dot username. That's AR Brandis. Okay. And we need to git review dash s, which sets up uh, the repository to insert, among, among other things, to insert a change ID into the commit messages, which is going to be necessary to glue the whole thing together. So once my git config is done, and I can check with git config dash l, uh, it looks good. It's not your launchpad name. It's the Garrett username. Okay, it's the one you're going to get when you uh, sign up. Okay. If you're lucky, you can get the same. So git review. Oh yeah, apt get install git review. I already did that for you. So that's one of the things. One of the other things for the folks that are going to do this from scratch. So you need apt get install git and uh, git review. So git review dash s is going to fail. It's going to try and connect to uh, the Horizon repository, actually the the, the Garrett uh, repository. Could not con connect to Garrett, even though I did set the username. All right, could not connect to Garrett at. All right. Why the hell not? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe it's a it's a problem with the the VM and the. Bleh. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on for now. Yeah, you got the point, right? We don't have a lot of time. This should work. It did work this morning, I promise you. <laughs> it's something with the Wi-Fi here. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. Yeah. Did, did somebody, has somebody been able to get this working from, from the conference floor? Yeah. So there are a couple of errors you can get here. And uh, one of them is this one. The other one is uh, that you need your private key to be accessible from the VM. 
There are a couple ways you can do that. You can copy it in uh, manually, which is not something you probably want to do. But you can also use the SSH-A, capital A, thing when you connect into the VM, which gets forwarded into your a local agent, which is better. Okay, so this should work. What? Oh, Dropbox. Dro <laughs> Unless you're encrypting that thing, don't do it. <laughs> okay, it's your private key, man. It's your lightsaber. Hold on to it with your life. What? What? When you connected with dash A. I did. Uh, I got an error message because if you do it from inside the screen, which is what I'm doing, I'm running a screen on my local notebook. Uh, so if you run SSH dash A from inside a screen, sometimes works and sometimes fails. <laughs> Beats me. Okay, so uh, you're probably not going to have that problem. L? Okay. But then what ports are, am I forwarding? Yeah, see, okay. <laughs> let me, all right, let me, we don't have a lot of time. Let me, <laughs> I want to I wanna at least show what, what you do here. So I'm on horizon git diff. Oh, where? I'm not. So git diff. Um, this is my ch neat little change. So I go git commit um, and actually git add uh, everything because I'm lazy git add period, git commit, and, ugh, oh, I hate nano. Editor, git commit. Ugh, oh, this is even worse. <laughs> um, I had a nice commit message prepared somewhere here. Wait. <laughs> I don't want to have to think right now. Uh, oh, and I, yeah, I'm, I actually skipped a step here. Uh, so yeah, this is pretty important. <laughs> this is pretty important. So let's not save this. So uh, I actually didn't save the file. And the first thing you need to do is git checkout dash b bug slash and the number of the bug you're fixing. Okay, so you're creating a so-called topic branch, all right? Okay, so if you run git branch, I'm now on bug and the number of the bug. This is, this is if you don't do this, things are gonna fail in interesting ways with Garrett. Um, and then you git commit. Ugh. And I'm going to be really lazy. Oops. OK. And you also check the last line out here, closes dash bug and the number of the bug. This is something else you need to include in your commit message. Okay. If you were implementing a blueprint and fixing a bug, you'd have implements blueprint BP number whatever. Yes, it's integrated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It has to. Um, you no, know, this is the reason you, you use that syntax is because it gets scanned by Garrett in order to integrate everything with Launchpad with whatnot. Okay, and uh, this is after it gets sent to the right places and the right people, they go and review your your code. You see, you don't actually need, once you submit the code, you don't actually need to um, talk to anybody, anybody about it. The folks that uh, handle Horizon will get a notification that a code was submitted for review, and hopefully they'll go and review it. All right? But if they don't, that's where you head on to, to the IRC chat room, you go on the meetings, you come to the OpenStack Summit, and the design sessions, and you go, I want that string committed, right? <laughs> in, a, in a more polite way than that, uh, hopefully. So I'm being really like, yeah, okay. 
So show default text for image formats, blah, 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 blah. OK, okay close this bug. Committed, yay. And now I go on opt stack horizon. And I run git pull. Okay, so what happened here is uh, I have a new branch, but I need to check it out here because I committed it into a branch, right? So this is where you know you need to you need to know git. There's no way around. Uh, Bug one three zero two two five six origin bug. Okay, so I'm now what this line was was git checkout dash b bug. This is the name of the local branch and then the name of the remote branch, which is actually in my other directory. Okay, so I'm there. If I run git log dash p. I can see my Adolfo Brandes commit message up there and what I changed right at the bottom. Okay, so the code is in there. I, now, I can now go to the Horizon uh, thingamajig, restart Apache to save some time, and run the, the log tail whatever uh, in there again. So up arrow. And let's see if we fix the bug. Well, it's, yeah, you're creating a new branch with the bug name. But remember, this is, Garrett is, is built in such a way that, uh, as to minimize conflicts in these kinds of situations, right? So when you push this upstream, the branch name is sort of a tag. You see what I'm saying? When it gets up there. So it's used to, to identify which bug it is and, 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 and connect the whole, the whole thing. I pulled down from... From my other directory, that's not up anywhere yet. It's it's just inside the VM so far. So uh, maybe you missed this this step where I. Um, uh, okay, all right. You're asking when you pull stuff back in, like when you're updating this branch. Okay, uh, this is an important question. Like, if it takes you a week to fix a bug in such a situation. You're going to want to update your branch with master, right? You're going to want to pull back stuff back in uh, and, and put your stuff, your local fixes on top of that. And this is called a rebase. Okay, so you're going to have to do that. There are a couple of slides in there, which unfortunately I'm not going to have time to show, but they're in there, OK? <laughs> I didn't submit anything so far. I just put the code in there, and we're going to check to see if it, that it worked. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> this is just the beginning, right? You have a code that works. This is where you get into the tough job of actually submitting it. OK, so um, oh yeah, unit tests. OK. Uh, let me just mention it. All OpenStack projects have unit tests and integration tests. The unit tests can be run from the project itself um, with no uh, extra infrastructure, OK? Uh, on DevStack, though, recently, it sets up Tempest for you. And Tempest is OpenStack's um, integration testing component. So once you write code, you run the unit tests on the project, which is you know, run tests usually, or you use talks if you want to. Um, and then you run Tempest to integrate everything. Uh, how this works with uh, Jenkins or Garrett, when you upload the code there, the unit tests are run automatically. Whenever, as soon as you hit git review, the code is sent up there, and the um, unit tests are run. Once a core reviewer approves your code, then the Tempest uh, tests are run, which are more expensive, which is why they don't run all the time. Okay? 
But before you submit your code, you should, you should ideally run those as well. All right, so that's what that does. Um, and if you find a problem during the tests, this is Git, by the way, again, you fix it and you amend the same commit you had before and then Git review and send it back up again. Okay, this is, this is what's gonna happen a lot. Um, all right, quickly, check, go back to these slides, check the Garrett workflow link, which has a very good explanation of how the Garrett works. Um, it explains how to pass tests. Getting reviewers, as I said, once again, if it's a bug fix and it's high priority, somebody's gonna review, review it quickly. The problem is getting, uh, 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 getting to actually fix it yourself, because probably somebody else already owns it. Um, try the mailing lists, and of course, try coming to the OpenStack Summit and talking to the developers, right? They're all here right now. Um, you need plus two reviews from core reviewers to get your patch accepted. This is important. You can get as many plus ones from the community as you like, but you still need two votes, or actually one plus two vote from a core reviewer before the patch is accepted. And this you can all see on the Garrett screen as well. All right, uh, this is how you update a change. Once you, um, as I mentioned before, you amend the commit. You're gonna do a bit of rebasing if you have a long-lived topic branch, so make sure you learn to learn how to rebase properly. Um, all right, just quickly, a couple minutes, what about blueprints? Uh, what's the difference between a bug and a blueprint? Well, essentially a bug describes the problem and a blueprint describes the solution. So if the problem is big enough that you know, it doesn't fit on Launchpad nicely like the bug we just handled did, you should probably write a blueprint. And when you write a blueprint, there's a whole set of uh, other stuff you have to do in addition to just fixing the bug, right? You have to create it on Launchpad, submit it for approval. It gets targeted to a milestone in the OpenStack release or not, okay? You have to convince people to accept your blueprint, okay? And then convince people to accept your code, which is the whole point. Uh, no, you're, you're assigned the blueprint, but um, you don't need to actually implement it. Okay? It's, it makes sense. Most people that submit blueprints, either, well, depends on the blueprint. Sometimes teams submit blueprints and they take on the implementation as well. It makes sense, right? And this is all uh, on Launchpad and it's visible. It's all very visible. Okay, so when you submit a blueprint, you don't need to necessarily bother the mailing list for somebody to take a look at it, but you do need to discuss it, hopefully. Okay, so you either do that on, on the summit, on IRC, or, or on the uh, Bloomprint page itself. Okay, you wait for the project technical lead to approve it, but you don't stop discussing it in the meantime, right? You, you, you will improve your Blueprint as you work with it. And last but not least, don't give up, because that, this is the toughest part of contributing to a project like OpenStack. It's tough. Um, as I said, sometimes it takes weeks for you to get a patch accepted. But don't give up, because you know, the project needs contributors. Uh, and you know, hopefully some of you are going to be one of the uh, 1,500 new developers this year. Okay? Hope I, I could help a little bit in that regard. Sorry my lab failed. You know, it's tough doing live stuff. Sometimes it doesn't work. Um, if you liked it, uh, feel free to treat it. The actual presentation is CC by SA, as far as I could make it, which is pretty much everything except the Padawan name. <laughs> so uh, once again, it's up at uh, either on GitHub itself, this is the URL for the actual present, the code of the presentation, or on uh, GitHub pages, again. Thank you very much, sorry, uh, I went over time a little bit. Thank you.